Tim, we've had a couple of big events over the weekend. How are we likely to trade? Friday, it does look like it's going to be a fairly flat day on the Australian share market. On the positive side, we have seen the People's Bank of China cutting the bank reserve requirement by 50 basis points. This is the third time in six months that we've seen a cut by the PBOC, and this should have a positive impact on the market. But this will be balanced off with what's happening in the Eurozone. And of course, the Pan Hellenic Socialist Party, or PASOK, has vowed to form a government. So it looks like it's inevitable now that Greece will head to the polls in June. So that uncertainty probably probably going to weigh on the market. If we have a look at our leads, we've seen the US market down by 0.3% on Friday. We've also seen commodity prices lower. Gold prices were off by 0.7%, silver prices were down by 1%, spot iron ore prices were down by 1.2%, and we also saw copper prices down by 1.2%. So those miners may come under a little bit of pressure, but all up we're watching the Aussie dollar as well. It's come, it's come precariously close to parity this morning. We have seen a bit of a bounce in the last few minutes so we're out of the danger zone for the time being but we did see a low of 100.08 US cents so we'll be watching that on the Aussie market today but all up it looks like it's going to be a pretty flat one also in the banking space we see Westpac trading ex dividend so that's going to be a weight on the market today just uh, coming through as well some news from Leighton Holdings John Holland securing a $570 million regional rail alliance contract, that subsidiary of Leighton there, no read on shares yet. Just turning to Dulux, of course, it's made that takeover offer for uh, Alesco. What did you make of those half-year numbers? It seemed to be a small dip in first half profit. We did see a fall of 1.6% in net profit. And if we have a look at Dulux as a business, there are a number of brands it owns. It owns Dulux, Shelley's, uh, British Paints, as well as the uh, Shelley's uh, Garden Care. Uh, uh, business as well but if we have a look at the key driver of its sales it comes from hardware sales in fact Bunning is its largest single customer and such an important driver of its earnings so often when we look at Dulux and the outlook for the business we also look at Bunnings and the outlook for Bunnings and if we have a look at Bunnings in the th in the December quarter we did see our uh, same store sales up by 3.2 percent and in the March quarter a rise of 3.3 percent in that third quarter we only saw one small format store uh, being open and of course new store openings mm -hmm. of Bunnings good news for a company like Dulux which derives so much of its sales from Bunnings but before the end of financial year of course Bunnings saying it is still looking to open seven new stores so that should be a key driver of earnings we have a Dulux we if we have a look at Dulux we know it it has a two dollar takeover offer on the table for Alesco but if we have a look at the shares they haven't been doing too badly over the last 52 weeks we've seen the shares rising by around about 11 percent. I think the result's slightly ahead of expectations despite uh, the fall that we've seen in net profit. So altogether a pretty solid result there. Just getting a, a very early read on Dulux shares. They're off about a third of a percent, three dollars and two obviously early in the session. Intertech Pivot also coming online now. Julia, its shares are off about two thirds of a percent at three dollars fourteen. It too was out with first half numbers. What did you make of its result? Incitec saw its profit falling by 20% to, so to $143.5 million. Now, its explosives business is a key driver of earnings at the moment and it is performing well with strong growth there. But if we have a look at what's going to be responsible for the change in earnings, it's actually going to probably be its fertilizer business. We have seen fertilizer uh, prices coming under pressure. Last year we saw DAP prices at $565 per tonne. That's probably going to fall to about $535 a ton uh, this year but it is something that we're watching closely to see whether we are going to see a change in the earnings of Incitec from that uh, fertilizer business. The shares of Incitec though haven't been doing so well in the last 52 weeks. It has been under a fair amount of pressure. The shares down by around about 19 percent. We have a look at Incitec pivot in the last uh, 30 days so this is what it looks like and you can see that the shares have been falling coming into this result it looks like the shares are trading a little bit lower now uh, on the back of those results as well